Hello and welcome to another Vintage Cube Draft. This is Old Man Pool. We've opened up a Moxon, which means I think we have a pretty easy first pick. That having been said, let's look at the rest of the pack, see if there's anything real exciting. I have yet to play with Ugin, I think, in any of the cubes. Uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever played Ugin. I would like to someday. I don't know if this is the time for it, but that is powerful. I like Death Right Shaman. Our beak of strings, kind of interesting. Eh, I think for the most part, this is like a kind of a medium pack. JT is really good in some decks. Hierarch's fine. Uh, Mana leak. Yeah, bunch of reasonable stuff. But Mox Ruby, I think, definitely takes the cake. Okay, what do we got next here? We got Mox Diamond, which is a much worse version. We got Vidalcan Sharkles, if we wanted to stick it to blue. Sheldock Isle, Abbott, Lightning Bolt, other stuff. I suppose, well, and Nickel Bolas, which is also sweet. I also don't think I've ever played Nickel Bolas. Uh, I take that back. I think maybe once. We could try and draft Mono Red. Lightning Bolt and Abbott are both pretty reasonable. I have never drafted Mono Red. I keep saying nevers here, but haven't done a lot of this. Maybe I'll try that. Maybe we'll try a Mono Red here. Lightning Bolt's a pretty good pickup. It's good even if we don't end up in that color. Uh, Vidalc and Shockles is probably next highest pick. Either that or like Arbor Elf, we want to go that way, Armageddon, etc. But I think Lightning Bolt's pretty reasonable. Okay. We've got a Firebolt, a Scalding Tarn, Stormbirth Dragon, Huntsmaster for going in that direction. I'm really tempted to just take the Glenelendra here though. I think this card is pretty nuts, honestly. It fills pretty good in just about any shell. I'm not really on the reanimate hype train. Scavenging Ooze is fine. I think Lenalendra is the most powerful card here. So, a little bit of a traitor, uh, what's the word? Betrayal right now, even after uh, considering going from on a red. We have Eidol Eidolon here. We've got Chandra, Karn, Olivia, Voldaren. Yeah, we're just going to kind of go into our sort of red-blue mid-range deck, which I feel like we do an awful lot, but it's pretty fun. We could just take the Chandra here, which is pretty good. And Dolan's taking a little bit more of a stand. This is pretty powerful in the mono-red deck. Stoneforge Mystic I think is fine, although I think it's maybe a little bit overrated. Karn's pretty good, too. You know, we take the Chandra. Again, this is a card that I would play in mono-red, and is pretty good if we do end up in more of a red-blue shell. I would like to be able to play Glenelendra, given the opportunity. Okay, so a little bit of a dearth of red and blue. We could take an Anticipate. It's a little bit late on Avacyn's Pilgrim. I feel like this pack might just be kind of bad. We could take the Golgari Signal and just use a little bit more fast mana. But at least right now, we're not looking like we're super high ramp. So maybe just like the Anticipate is the correct pick here. That card is perfectly fine, perfectly playable. Okay, Torrential Gear Hulk works well with the Anticipate, Lightning Bolt. Not wild about Brainstorm on its own. I do think Master of the Wild Hunt is a little bit better than a lot of people do, but yeah, okay, I'll take a Gear Hulk here. Okay. And Tezzeret, which we're not really in on right now. Although we could maybe think about getting another color. Rift Bolt isn't something I really like outside of Mono Red. And I'm not sure we're going to be in that right now. We have some really good blue and some reasonable red here. But it looks like it's maybe drying up a little bit as the packs go around. Hmm. I guess we could take Tezzeret and maybe go a little bit more artifacty potentially. I don't like the Edict. Maybe Splash for Banishing Light, which I think is pretty reasonable. I guess I'll take Tezzeret here, although I don't think that makes the cut a lot of the time. Uh, Rashad in Port is fine. You know, we're seeing like a bunch of kind of black, red, white sort of mid-range sort of cards. Yeah, I guess Rashad in Port. I guess we could take Xenagos. Then it goes, this is pretty powerful if we end up in green. This is a pretty powerful ramp card. Makes a 2 2 every turn. I think I'd rather have the port, honestly. I think the port will make the deck no matter what. Alright. Back to our original pack. We have Exquisite Firecraft, which is. eh. I mean, it's whatever. 
couple of red cards. I'm not opposed to Hypnotic Specter. I don't really think we're a heartbeat spring deck. So I guess the question is whether Exotic or Exquisite Firecraft is really what we want here. Or if we'd rather just switch into another color. I guess Firecraft is alright. The fact that we're already there. Yeah, and maybe Mono Red's still open. If we get back the uh, Idolan, it's a pretty big sign, I think. Certainly Rashad and Port's a pretty nice land to have in Mono Red. Okay. I want to say this is the Idolan pack. It might have been the last one. Um, I guess Stormbirth Dragon. Not terrible if my opponent's only playing like paths and stuff. It's pretty difficult to deal with. But it's kind of not the strongest threat either. Not a bad top end for Mono Red because it just hits in quickly. But as far as like recurrent threats, I think I'd rather have Planeswalkers most of the time. Yeah, there's the Adolan. Okay. Well, keep our eyes on Mono Red here. And that, that may just be what the, the seat's telling us to pick. And maybe we could play Mono Red and like Splash for the Glenelendra and I guess Gear Hulk's too. Really like this card, but maybe it's maybe it's just not to be. Maybe we're supposed to be mono red here. Uh, Magus isn't bad. It's really good against some matchups and not real exciting in other ones. But sometimes you play this and your opponent's just like, oh, I lose. And I do like cards that once in a while just win you the game on the spot. Okay, heading out of pack one, I feel like we did reasonably well. It does seem like mono red is fairly open. We passed a couple of cards, Rift Volt, but nothing like super noticeable. The fact that Adolan came around is pretty big. All right, what do we got now? Mana Crypt is probably the single most powerful card in the pack. It's not the best in mono red. We don't really, really care. It, about it dealing damage to us. I guess maybe we could be a little bit more mid rangey mono red. Or maybe we can still be red and blue here. There's no reason we have to shift into it just because some of the great mono red cards are open. Mana Crypt is very powerful. Alternatively, here. Not a ton. I guess like Flame Tongue Kabu is alright. Johnny's fine. Yeah, I think we're just gonna take the Crypt. I think that's. Highest power by a significant margin. Okay, in this pack, we have Ponder, Young Necromancer, both of which are pretty good. A bunch of other kind of reasonable cards if we were going in other directions. Spiral of Canal, I wouldn't mind having either. Hmm, how many instant sorceries do I have right now? One, two, three. Not actually that many for the Young Necromancer, but the upside in this card is pretty high. I think we're going to take that over the Ponder. Again, if we end up in Mono Red, it's a little better for sure. Although I do... And maybe Ponder's better if we are playing a little bit more of a mix. It works well with the Gear Hulk and the like. don't think we're likely to get either of them back. I guess Ponder. We have Mana Crypt too, which maybe entices us to play a little bit more of a slow game. Play the Gutter Snipe and just keep taking Instants and Sorceries. I don't think we want the Fire Drink Crusader. Taiga doesn't have a lot of value. We're just... Hmm, can't quite decide what the identity of our hand is. We could play Gush. Maybe play a couple of... Or a few... A fewer land count. I think Gutter Snipe's likely to wheel. I think I'm going to take the Gush here. Okay, there's Delver, Force Spike. Sort of War and Peace. I do think Rectus Return is, again, kind of better than a lot of people think, especially if you've got some fast mana. I guess we'll take a Delver here. Maybe we'll just kind of be an aggressive, sort of tempo-y red-blue deck. And I'm not wild about Force Spike on its own, even though it is an instant sorcery, which may end up being relevant. Bonfire's not bad. Mind's Desire is. I don't think we'd play anything else here, other than we may play a Sigma. If one came around. Okay, our, I feel like our deck's got a lot of power in it, but it's kind of unfocused power. Like, we're not doing all that many, like, disgusting, crazy good things. It may be that we can't afford to play Idolan here. Probably not at this point. 
Habits may be alright. Just is another threat that we can play early. That has a little bit of upside as well. Okay, here we have a Spell Pierce, or Chain Lightning, or a Thunder Maw Hellkite. Thunder Maw is kind of okay. I think we're going to take the Spell Pierce here. I think we are solidly in a more red-blue shell. I think we're just getting some hooked up with some good blue this pack. I don't think we need to force Mono Red here, even though we maybe could have had a decent deck with it. I think I would have gone that way, except for that we got the Mana Crypt. And Mana Crypt is just such a powerful effect if you can utilize it, but Mono Red is not really best for it. Okay. We have Koth, not really a Goblin Welder deck. Uh, Needle Spires, I think just Koth. I think we could use a couple more Planeswalkers. This isn't a real bad uh, finisher, it just hits your opponent pretty quickly. Sure. Fingerback Walker or Mishra's Factory is probably the picks here. We already have one colorless land. We're maybe gonna try and play a little bit less because of Mox Crypt or Mox Ruby. Hmm. Harsh Mentor is really good against some decks, although I don't know if we're that one. I think I'd rather have Hangerback Walker with some of our fast mana. I think this has the potential to get pretty big. I think it's a pretty powerful effect just on its own. Often on coming around, heresy. Don't think Magus of the Wheel is something that we really would like to do in this deck. Well, I don't really know what else is here. Yeah, I don't know, maybe there's a world where this is not too bad. I don't think we're playing any of those cards. Uh, Disc isn't bad, especially because we have a couple of Planeswalkers, although not tons. I think we're more likely to play it than like Inkwell Leviathan. I don't think we're gonna get a miscellaneous like uh, Tinker or the like that we're gonna use in this deck. We just don't have that many artifacts and don't have any other threats. Let's take a disc. Disc is pretty good sometimes. Okay, the Gutter Snipe did come back around. I think I like it better than the Mind Slaver. Especially, we have, we have a decent number of instants and sorceries now. We pick up a couple more. Gutter Snipe maybe is a serious win condition. I don't think we're playing the Storm Breath Dragon. Hmm, we'll play a Force Spike though. Not bad. Uh, I don't know. Nothing here, I guess. We'll take Necrotal. Sure. Who knows? Dragon Lord, Atarka, Recruiter of the Guard. I guess Atarka, maybe. We're not playing. We have the potential to have some really fast openings. If we have both uh, Mana Crypt and Mox Ruby in our hand, we can play either of our four drop Planeswalkers. That's pretty hard to deal with. Ooh, Time Walk. Yeah, I don't really think there's anything that compares with this. I think I'd play Ralzarek, Rural Signet's Possibility. I like Walking Ballista. I like Jace Balern, I think. Also more than average, but Time Walk's great. Okay, ooh. We want here. True name Nemesis, I feel like, really does pull its weight. It's pretty powerful. Don't think we want Lotus Bloom. Don't think we like. I don't think this is an opposition deck. We have a couple of creatures, but not enough to really make it, make it great, I think. We'd probably play Searing Spear. I think True Name Nemesis is just a house, though. Although I'm not opposed to a Metamorph as well. But. This card just blocks so very well and is pretty good on the beatdown, too. Let's create things. Okay, well, I'm glad we're in blue. There's a Splinter Twin here, but we haven't seen any of the other uh, cards to go along with it, so I think it's less likely that gets there. I think Consecrated Sphinx is better than Worm Coil Engine. Okay, yeah, we've been really hooked up over these last couple of picks, I think. So I'd like to hit maybe a few more, uh, a few more spells. Mental misstep is not my most exciting. Don't really think that we have a whole lot that works with the dividing top. We just play Palancron. Pretty powerful. That it's more or less free. It is expensive though. Play Sword of 
Feast and Famine? I don't know if we want that, though. We have, like, Delver, Abbot, True Name, Nemesis. We don't have that many creatures. And a lot of our creatures are more expensive. Play Mental Misstep. It's not real exciting, either. I don't really like the Dragon Lord. I guess we'll take Palancron. I think that's our best... Oop, not the Knight. Palancron. I think that's our best pick, although that wasn't super exciting. High Tide. Don't really need that. Play Dak Faden. I do think this card's pretty good. You steal artifacts from your opponent a lot of the time, and just uh, looting for two consistently is pretty good as well. I don't think you ever realistically ultimate him, but the other two effects are pretty good. Here's some mono red cards that have come around too. Sulfuric Vortex, Goblin Guide, but I think that ship has sailed. Not opposed to a Compulsive Research either. Don't think we're necessarily a Peeble deck. We don't have that much fast mana. I think I like the deck fading over the, the Research, even with the instance and sorcery synergies that we have. Okay. Here I think Is It Charm over the Goblin Dwell Dark Dwellers or Remand. Although Dark Dwellers may come around. I feel like this is picked pretty late, and I think we would play it. But I like his turn. All right. Fifth thing, Needle. Don't have anything that takes advantage of the workshop. Not playing, burning. Will cast your mage is bad. Oh, well, maybe fire and ice, actually. It is an instant. You do get to do one or the other. Both of those are reasonable. I think it's maybe a little better than Fifth thing, Needle on its own. Sure, we'll take fire and ice. I think the deck has come together pretty well. We actually still are kind of barely on the edge of playables. So we don't have a whole lot of good like sideboard options, but I think that the deck itself is pretty powerful. Ooh, well, there's the Deceiver Exarch. But I think Zealous Conscripts is just a better version. We can Splinter Twin with that on the off chance it comes around. Although, with only one hit for Splinter Twin, I'm not sure we'd play it. Especially because we don't have that much, like, finding. We have a Ponder, Anticipate. But I think Zealous Conscripts is pretty great on its own. I'm happy to see it this late. Sealing and Planeswalker and getting rid of it's great. Ooh, wow. Well, yeah. These all feel pretty good, too. I think I like the Jace better than Ralzarek, although... Belzar definitely has his place. I do like the fact that he just lightning bolts over and over. Mm. Chase is a little bit cheaper. A little bit more direct card advantage. We have a lightning bolt, fire, is it charm? Is it firecraft? Chandra kills something. I think I'm gonna take the Jace. Wow. Feels like this last pack has been like insane for us. Metamorph or Solemn, both really good. Both I'd be happy to play, I think. I guess we're maybe not trying to ramp that much beyond four. We do want to get up to like six, but I think the Metamorph maybe does a little bit better. Let's see, what are we cutting here? Gush maybe isn't the best for us, as we do want to hit our land drops at least for a while, and then once we get up a little bit higher, we can yeah, there's Splinter Twin. I guess we'll take that over like Careful Study. Eh, maybe we sideboard that in. I don't like playing Twin when there's just one good target for it, though. Yeah, I feel like Gush is. We're not going to want to be throwing back our lands all that often. Especially when we have some pretty good top end. Maybe Bonfire isn't something we should be looking to play just on its own. We'll take the Mental Misstep. That is a sideboard card on occasion. I wonder if Gutter Snipe is not where we want to be. Hmm. We're not going to play any of these. I guess Sulfuric Vortex is scariest. Yeah, it looks like Mono Red was definitely open, though. We could have gone that way, but I think we were aptly rewarded by, like, Time Walk. And I like playing Glenelendra, True Name Nemesis. We've got, some, we've got some solid good blue cards here, too. But I do not regret going down this path. Brimstone Volley, another sideboard card we're not unhappy to see. Okay, so if we take, there's the Dual Caster Mage, although I think it's unlikely we ever sideboard that in. Okay, well, I think the deck actually looked pretty good there. Let us, right instance from Sorceries, I guess. 
Cooper creatures. Let's bring up our planeswalkers to. Maybe Koth isn't at his best in this deck. It is kind of a win condition, but if we're looking for stuff to cut, maybe that should be the cut. I don't know. It's something your opponent has to respect. It's kind of bad if you're getting beaten down. Maybe we'll sideboard it out, but I think on its own, it's not bad. I think Bonfire is going to be less good more of the time. Bonfire is a really powerful effect, and against some decks, it just kind of wins you the game. But... Okay, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 hits for Gutter Snipe. So it's probably going to deal like 6 damage in a game. I think that's probably good enough. And shoot at Planeswalkers, which is pretty nice too. We could just run this right now. Watch Ruby and Rashad and Portal lands. I guess we may want to cut one more. Mana Crypt is kind of a... It's kind of land too. We have we got literally no dual lands though, so our mana is a little bit shaky. I think I'd rather make sure that we can cast all of our spells. So let's cut one more here. We take out the Abbot maybe. Abbot's not the most exciting, especially because there are some cards that we hit like Horse Spike, Spell Pierce that are pretty bad off the top. Let's take out Abbot maybe. Do you think I like Hangerback Walker? Let's do a quick one over on our sideboard. Don't want any of those. Don't really want any of those, I don't think. Bonfire, maybe. I think Bonfire I'd play before the Abbot, actually. Okay, maybe this is maybe this is our final list, though. I feel like we're doing some pretty powerful stuff. We've got some good interaction, some good inevitability a little bit later, some Planeswalkers and... Potential Gear Hulk, Sphinx, the like. Okay, let's add in some lands here. I wonder if we don't want to play the port. Maybe the fact that it's colorless is enough of a downside. This is really good against some decks, and I don't think we're necessarily going to need our mana later game. We'll do some decent like card draw too. And yeah, maybe port we cut. Okay. And then 9-8, I think I like, or 9, yeah, 9-8 nine, because of the Mox Ruby. I think I like this. I like being a little bit heavier on blue because a lot of our early interactions blue. Sure. All right, the deck looks cool. I'm excited to play match one. I'll see you guys there shortly.